Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas. We are delighted that you're here. My family and I have not been, we have been in Iowa or traveling or Christmas has fallen on a Sunday, many of the last Christmases, and so I haven't been able to be part of this Christmas morning group for at least three or four or maybe even five years. So it's a delight for us to be sitting here with you. Um, if, if I ever make you feel guilty, North Church or South Church, about not sitting far enough forward, even my own family couldn't sit in the front bench today. So. I guess, I guess we understand what it's like to creep back. We're glad you're here. Um, as, a, as a gathering song, uh, one of the few that we'll stand for, I invite you to stand and take your blue hymnals, the main hymnal we'll use today, and sing the first and the fourth first, one and four of 212, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses one and four. Please stand. seated. At Christmas time, uh, we are reminded of the many elements of the Christmas story. And as much as I try and form in my own children, my own family, uh, the, the key characters and the key events of the story, when we get to Christmas morning, uh, it's easy to be, for us to be excited about other things and distracted. This morning we tried to get up and light the five Advent candles, the Christmas candle included, and try and tell the story. And at each stage of the lighting and the reading, my kids were going, is it time to open presents now? Is it time to open presents now? They got the chance to do it, but we come to this service on Christmas morning, in the middle of the morning, to remind ourselves, even if we've been excited about some other things, to bring ourselves back, center ourselves again in the key elements of the story. Uh, here at South Church on Christmas morning, we have been in the habit, most recently, of simply reading the, the scriptures from uh, Luke 1 and 2 and Matthew 2, and singing songs or familiar carols or portions of them that go with these readings. So I invite you to simply listen to these stories as our college students read them. After each of the ten readings, we will respond with a song just as you have done. So I invite you uh, to follow along uh, where we're at with the reading so that you know what we're going to be singing. All but one are in your green hymnal. I mean, in your, sorry, in your blue hymnal. Uh, there is one and underlined in the fourth reading, we will sing Mary's Song of Joy, which will be in your green Sing the Journey. But otherwise, please stay seated, be using your blue hymnal, be paying attention if there's particular verses that we want to be singing together. Um, as soon as the, each reading is done, the pianist, the, the two pianists will, will begin you in the songs as the candles are lit. Will you bow with me as I give thanks to our God? Today, O oh Lord, you are now indeed God with us, Emmanuel. The soles of your feet have touched the earth. Today, on this Christmas morning, in a back street, in a forgotten house, the other places that have been forgotten in this world are lit up with your love. They've been given significance by your birth. Today, the households of the earth, including ours, welcome our king, the king of heaven. For you have come among us to be God with us. You are one of us in full human form. So this service, may it be one of rejoicing in our hearts. 
may be one that glorifies your name and brings you, O Lord, joy. May our songs rise to surround your throne with life-giving praise. Just as the Magi came, as we'll hear later in the service, and bent their knees at Jesus' um, living room or in his house, we too come and bend our knees, offering our gifts of praise and love to you as we hear these stories and sing our songs. Bless our time together now. Help us to immerse ourselves in your story, your advent here. In Jesus' name, we pray. I'm going to invite our two readers up to, uh, to read the first reading. Um, after this reading, we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silent. And then we're going to keep a minute of silence before the, the second reader comes. Luke 1, 5 through 25. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as the priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time came for burning of the incense, all of the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. And these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people.
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus.
At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zachariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John and all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. 
Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus, he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors, and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census would be taken in the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornelius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to the firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
And they were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping their watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, 
Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route.
When the Magi had gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. Later, after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, that he would be called a Nazarene. In this short time of listening through and singing through the nativity uh, stories from Matthew and Luke, may we have looked right into God's face. In your time listening to the stories and singing these songs, may you have had the opportunity to dwell within the gaze of Christ as a destitute child. May you have seen in his eyes flecks of light that will shatter all the darkness in our world. May you have found yourself standing in the small presence of this child, but one that will tear the world asunder and turn things aright. As we listen, listen to this story, may you now go out, go out and bear witness to this ageless story we told this morning, a story of hope, which just like Jesus is just still in its infancy, waiting to grow into fullness. May you find your footing as you go out from here along Christ's path of salvation. May you be unfurled and flung far and wide to tell this news. And go from here with this blessing. Hear the mighty voice of God whispering and know that the story of Christ's coming is just beginning. As you go out from here, I invite you to greet one another on this Christmas day in the eagerness that joy is still to come in full. I invite you to use the words of the song, greet one another as we depart from this place. One of you says, joy to the world, and the other says, the Lord is come. Greet one another as you go out from here in joy. Thank you for coming today. <laughs>